passed into the animate function. And for now, we're just going to pass in one variable. And that variable is going to have the parameter name of color and the value of red. Now, if I hit save, traditionally you would think, oh, okay, maybe the A link gets overridden and it doesn't increase in font size anymore. But actually, the A link now has two event listeners attached to it. So they're both going to fire one after another. So if I click on B link, it's just going to increase in font size like it did before. But if I click on A link, you'll see that it also increases in font size, but it also slowly animates and uh, turns red, which is kind of neat. So we're going to take the knowledge that we've acquired here and we're going to start a new project. And this project is going to be a very simple menu system that's going to use animation and some jQuery events. I'm going to start this off by just saving what we've got right here. And I'm going to call this menus.html. Now, we're going to need a bit of CSS to get us going. So I'm going to be writing a bit of that, and I'm also going to have to change our current HTML. By the way, as you see this start to grow, it would make sense to create your own JavaScript file that sits in another file, and then just to simply reference it. The same way that we reference ajax.googleapis.com slash jsapi, you can reference local or remote uh, .javascript files, .js files, and they'll run on your page. So you could take you know this body of code right here, stick it in a function, and then you could call that function from uh, your page. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is this title is actually going to be called Simple Events Menus. And down here, we're going to create a unordered list, and we're going to have some list items because this is a menu after all, and then a hyperlink. We're going to call this nav A, and I'm going to copy this a couple times. We'll have nav A, nav B, nav C, and nav D. And then down here, I'm going to have another div of type or of class content. And inside that, I'm going to have a paragraph with a bit of text in my content section. And lastly, I'm going to create a container around my whole div structure. And a div is just a division in your page. So this is a, a div that is wrapped around our whole project. If I hit save, refresh this, Oh, we've changed our file name, so I should change that to menus.html. So far, it's not very interesting. With a bit of CSS, though, it's going to look a lot better. So let's get started with the CSS, the styling of our uh, document object model, or our HTML page. So I'm going to start with a style tag of type text slash CSS. And again, you probably want to put this in another file, a .css file. But for the purposes of this example, I think it's simpler just to keep it all in one page. It'll make it a lot easier to read instead of jumping back and forth. So the first thing I want to style is the actual body. And the body should have a background of gray, EF, EF, EF. The EF corresponds to red, and then this EF corresponds to uh, red, green, and then the last two EFs correspond to blue. And then we're going to say that the font family should be Arial and Sans Serif. We're just specifying a primary font and a font in case that primary font doesn't exist. And we're going to have our container, which will be center aligned. This top margin is zero, and the left and right margin are set to auto. And we're going to give it a width of 850 pixels, a background of white, 
And we'll just have a nice little border around our container so we can create a bit of definition. Also a gray. You'll notice that I'm indenting my CSS here. This is a trick that a associate of mine taught me, which I thought was really neat because it lets you kind of see the structure of your page within your CSS as well. So we've got a title tag, which is being styled as well. And you'll notice that I've got a dot container, which corresponds to the class container, and a pound title, which corresponds to the ID title. And this is just typical CSS. And this is how CSS selects various elements on a page. Also, before we get into styling the navigation, I want to add some more classes here. I'm going to have an unordered list, but this unordered list is special. It's going to be of type nav. And we're going to start by saying that our nav item of nav item B is going to have the class called active. And this is going to be really helpful in helping us style which is the active navigation on our page. So I'm going to refresh this again. It should look a little different now. So we've got our title at the top and our navigation and then a bit of text in my content, content section. Now we just need to style the navigation. So we're going to start off by saying that our nav doesn't have those ugly bullets. It's going to have a background of dark gray, the same dark gray that we have in the title. It's going to be centered and it's going to have a height of 40 pixels. Then for each list item inside of our navigation, we want that to be displayed in line. We want it to float left. In other words, we want them to be stacked one next to the other. If our nav container is 40 pixels, we want our height of our nav items to be 34 pixels with a padding of 0 pixels and 10 pixels. So this is the top padding and bottom padding, and this is the left padding and the right padding. We'll just set some margins all across. So if you think of a clock, you've got 5 pixels on the top, 5 pixels on the right, no pixels on the bottom, and 5 pixels on the left, so that we've got some space around our nav items. And we've got a line height of 10 pixels. What this will do is move the text inside of our list items down a notch. We're going to be using this for animation later. We also need to specify a bit of a background so that there's some definition. And let's create a border. So the border width is going to be one pixel on the top, one pixel on the right, no pixels on the bottom, and one pixel on the left so that it creates like a tab. The border style has to be something, so we'll say it's solid, just a solid line, and a color of 999, which is another gray, a little lighter than 666. Refresh this, and we've got ourselves some tabs. They're not too shabby, but they could use a bit of work. So now that I've got my list item, I'm trying to go through this relatively quickly just because this is a jQuery tutorial and not a CSS tutorial. But if you have any questions, feel free to email me or talk about them in the Killer PHP forum. So we want our hyperlinks to have a certain color. And we'll say that the text decoration should be none. In other words, we don't want that underline. And now we're going to start styling our active div items. And this is very important. So we've got an active element here, and we want our active elements to look a little different from the rest of our elements. Actually, before I get into this, I want to make sure that I 